Hi everybody, in this section we will attempt to movie cart and code an entire full-length feature film. So for this one I purchased Westworld from 1973, Michael Crichton. Um, I've never seen this film so I'm looking forward to seeing it. I haven't decided if I will watch it in movie cart originally or in DVD. Um, it's important when you rip a DVD to follow the laws and regulations of your area. So do not make unauthorized recordings and distributions of films for which you are not legally entitled. That being said, I'll probably pause while I work for a while on this plastic because I'm not very good at opening packages. Okay, I think I got it started now. Now this DVD only costs 10 bucks on Amazon, but it says Westworld Le Monde de l'Ouest. So it's said bilingual. So Hopefully there is an English track as well as a subtitled one. It appears to have one DVD and this is why I like um, WinX DVD Ripper and purchase the license for it because it gives me all those options pretty quickly. So I'm going to put it in my little portable uh, DVD player. and hopefully it launches. And I'll start up WinX DVD Ripper. Yay, Westworld. So that's working good. So right here I just press disk, Westworld, OK. Uh, MP4 video, that all looks good. That's what I like about this. It's all default options, basically. Uh, let's see. All right, so there's English and French. Perfect. So I know I'm getting the English. Um, perhaps in the future, Movie Cart might have a second soundtrack, which would be a cool upgrade. So I will output this on, let's just make it D drive to keep things simple. All right, now let's see how long this takes. It's only an hour and a half, that's interesting. Uh, I think one interesting thing about this film, the reason I picked it was, I believe it was the first major motion picture to include computer graphics in it. And that's namely when Ewell Brenner is looking out and they show his pixelated computer vision. So I won't be here, I won't show you the whole, the full thing, but just curious, an hour and a half seems to take about 30 minutes or less. So we'll come back when it's done. Okay, um, that in the end didn't take too long at all. It took about 18 minutes for an hour and a half. So that's great. Uh, so let's see what happened. Uh, let's see. Westworld. I'll take a peek and let's try VLC Media Player. But at any rate, it looks like it got all the uh, I got all the content. It looks pretty clear. So let's try and encode it. Hey everybody! I actually had to re-record the second part of the video because I changed the encoding interface so much. So uh, hopefully this goes a little smoother. So from the last uh, section of the video. We just created Westworld from the DVD. So let's go ahead and refind our encoder, encoder.to, and launch that up in the latest version of Touch Designer. And everything's still set to street, so we're going to change that to Westworld. We'll change the input movie and we'll change the output to Westworld. MVC. And now when I push play, we see that the Westworld DVD is there. A couple things right off the bat. We notice the first scene isn't cropped nicely. There's a lot of wasted black space that the uh, Atari 2600 will be playing. And the other thing is that there's this distribution trailer at the front. Uh, let's slow down the delay so we can see that a little better. So, there, this section. So we'll trim this out. So I'll wait till it's done. 
right after this. Pause. And now I'm going to set the start point to there. And you'll see that it begins exactly where we want it. And looking at the end, careful, there might be spoilers here. Looks okay. So the first thing uh, we'll do is, unlike recording a short video where we could just hit uh, final render and be done, we're going to try recording some controls over top that control things like pan and zoom mostly. So if we go here, for example, and let's change our zoom, our cropping, to be exactly where we need it. It's the inner square that counts. And every pixel counts, so I'm just going to take a moment to try and squeeze it in there. Okay, so that's what it looks like. Notice that the preview quality is 3. If we crank that up to 4, it's slightly better. It runs a little slower. And similarly, preview quality zero looks pretty bad, but runs very fast. So I'm just going to leave this at three for a second. And now I'm going to hit record. I'll move this over a little bit to make sure we get that. And now we're recording the first section. Just going to move my crop box over slowly through there. And I'll bring my delay back down so it speeds through this. And during this, if I bring up this uh, stats window, we'll see that it's currently running around uh, th three to four times original speed, which is great on this machine individual results may vary. So I've seen uh, the intro to this movie before uh, during these tutorials, so I just know that the second scene, I'm going to have to recrop things quite a little bit again. All right, so now it's done. I hit pause. It's still recording, but let me re hit rewind five seconds. All right, that looks better. I just want to get ready for the credits, so I'm just going to bring this out a bit, pull that out a bit, and then I hit play. You'll notice as I'm recording the controls, there's a yellow section that's being drawn beneath here. I just want to pause. I want to make sure that I've got everything nicely framed up. And that looks good. So let play some more. what it looks like down here. Um, I have both their faces in here for this scene, which looks fine to me. But uh, I can always interactively move this crop box around or change the brightness in gamma, rewind five seconds. As long as this yellow light is flashing, my current control settings are being saved. I can always pause, turn off record, come back, push play, and move the time bar around if I want to redo a section. So I don't have to record over the whole thing. It's going to keep the last value that I played forward. So as I just zoom through different parts of the movie, I'll just hit pause, and I'll see what things are like. Everything looks pretty good as much as I would expect. Let me bring up the, the preview quality. If I didn't like something, I could always, ooh, that's a good look. If I didn't like something, I could always, for example, uh, change the brightness or gamma. So right now it's at one. It might look better a little higher, for example, depending on the scene. It's gonna go through here. here. I know there are some nighttime scenes they don't look too bad, but if, as I was playing forward, I could always try my hand at uh, reset that, uh, changing these values. And there are many more values I can change up here as well. I've just taken the most popular ones and populated them in this section using this pop-up menu. 
But let's say, for example, I like everything the way it looks there. So I think that's pretty good. So I'm just going to, you don't need to do this, but let's try a save session. And we'll call it westworld.to. This is a tow file for Touch Designer, by the way. And just one little hint, you can always hit escape and pull back the curtain and see the network that was created to encode this movie. Uh, everything you can do in the encoder, you can access and change yourself uh, if you're familiar with Touch Designer or you want to learn. So for example, if you go into Colorize, Colorize GPU, you'll see all the shaders that are used to select the foreground and background colors and the dithering. But we'll just go back to project, go back to F1, and let's say it's ready. So render quality maximum at four, and we'll hit final render. And we can see our little crop box being moved around as we originally performed it. So at preview quality four, my speed is only around 170%. This is actually a fairly decent computer with a nice uh, video gaming card in it. So on another machine I own, yeah, for hobby things, uh, that speed can be as low as like 25, 30, 40%. But it will get the job done. So according to uh, this rough calculation, there's roughly about an hour of rendering time. So I'm going to pause the video and then we'll come back to see what's been completed. Stay tuned. At any rate, uh, the movie's done. In the end, it only took about 31 minutes. Uh, the speed was around 330%, which was great. So let's take a look at what we recorded. Um, there's westworld.mvc. It's about 1.3 gig for an hour and a half, so that's the rate you'll be looking at when you uh, try and transfer these files onto your own movie cart. But in the meantime, we'll pop it into Gopher 2600, which has become my uh, favorite emulator for its look. So let's see what we got. I'll just use the joystick controls to shuttle forward. always said, Dallas is the vacation of the future today. At Dallas, you get your choice of the vacation you want. So that looks pretty good. Uh, the sound's okay. Maybe it could be a little brighter. Uh, There's medieval world, Roman world, and... We'll just fast forward quickly through different parts. West world. <laughs> it came out pretty fair. One thing when you're making your own movies is what you may want to do is is set the delay to something slow and as it's playing forward you can go you can more carefully control all the uh, color and cropping levels to make sure you get everything where you want it. In particular um, I like to zoom in quite a bit more because as you can see things just look nicer when you try and squeeze in uh, less detail and color as well. So let me try and find a nighttime scene. That doesn't look too bad actually. Um, we'll set the right there. Um, incidentally, this view that you see here is Ewell Brenner's computer vision. I think it was the first time real computer graphics were introduced in a a widely distributed major motion picture. So I think that's kind of neat. And we took that extremely expensive effect and <laughs> brought it right down again to make it look crappy. Sorry, you all. But at any rate, that's about it. That's how you would record a full-length feature film um, to get a file that's about uh, one to two gigs. And in the next video, I'll show you how you can transfer that file onto an SD card and put it in your own Atari movie cart and play it on your own Atari. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.